This week in hobby news, we're getting a look at some brand new Eldar Guardians. We're getting a preview of what's coming to Warhammer Plus in 2022. And Marvel Zombies is coming to the Zombicide universe. I'm Angela, you're watching Hobby Night, and let's get into this week's news. All right, let's start off by talking about Marvel Zombies, a Zombicide game, because I am a huge fan of the Zombicide franchise. I have several of their games already in my collection. I kicked, um, I back, or I, ugh, I kickstarted the Zombicide Black Plague when that originally launched, and then I eventually picked up Invaders. Now, I'm a pretty big Marvel fan. I really, really enjoyed the What If series, which did some animated versions of the Marvel Zombies and the models in this game totally are giving me that What If vibe. So I'm really, really digging the look of this. Let's talk a little bit about the game itself because it's not just one game, it's actually two games. And as you saw at the end of that trailer, we're getting a gigantic Galactus which I'm super excited for because from the sounds of it, it sounds like it's on the scale of the giant Cthulhu that came in the Death May Die Kickstarter, which I also have, and it's freaking huge. So I'm very excited for that zombie Galactus. But let's talk about the actual games themselves. So we have the core game, which is Marvel Zombies, a Zombicide game, which is where you get to play as the zombies themselves. You're gonna get a variety of heroes who have been turned into zombies and they are going about feeding on bystanders, gaining abilities, and really trying to survive the heroes that may come onto the board with AI abilities. But what heroes are we getting? It looked like from the trailer, we're definitely getting a Deadpool, a Captain Marvel, a Wasp, a Hulk, Captain America, and Iron Man. But I expect there will be more, and I'm sure there will be add-ons as the Kickstarter goes. We also seem to be getting, and at least the core box, so a couple of hero models as well, including Spider-Man, and I believe I saw a Doctor Strange in the trailer as well, which is really cool. I assume you'll probably, again, get more of those, but that's what I saw so far. 
In this first game that they're launching, it's going to be primarily focused on the zombie mode where you are actually playing as the zombies, which I think is really cool. One of the reasons that I stopped getting hugely into the zombicide and collecting more of them is because I wasn't really seeing too much reason to keep buying them and being the heroes and just fighting off zombies. While that is fun, I only need so many zombie models for my RPG games and everything to substitute, and I only am going to want to play these games so much. But the fact that you can actually play as the zombies in this one really, really excites me because I actually, I don't know, I just think that sounds fun and I don't think as far as I know that they've done that before. I know there's a couple of the games that I've sort of just skipped and haven't really looked into, so this might be not a new mechanic, but I'm really enjoying the concept of it. And I like the idea that it is tied to the Marvel Universe. But then we have a second game that is a standalone game. You can just buy it separately. Um, that is Marvel Zombies X-Men Resistance. And this is where you're gonna get all your X-Men in, obviously. And I really like this because this ties a little bit more to what actually happened in the Marvel comics originally, which What If really didn't cover because they aren't really able to use the licensing for the X-Men quite yet in the animated series, but they can in the board games because it's slightly different. So it's really cool to see all the X-Men involved. It looks like we're getting the hero characters for Magneto, Rogue, Storm, which I am absolutely loving that sculpt, although the Magneto is really great too, a Wolverine, Colossus, which I'm excited to see, and Mystique. Then for the zombie characters, we are at least getting a Sabretooth, I believe there's a Cyclops, a Dark Phoenix, and an Iceman, which I don't think they showed in the trailer itself, but in the live stream video that they had when they launched this trailer yeah, uh, earlier this weekend, um, or earlier this week, I guess, um, they showed him off and it looks really cool. I really like the sort of ice design that they have for the zombie. So those are the two games. In the X-Men version, you are playing as heroes. It's gonna be a little bit more of that classic zombicide feel where you're resource managing and trying to save everybody and protect the X-Mansion from the looks of it. Those tiles actually made the X-Mansion and I believe if you flip them over, cause of course all zombicide tiles are double-sided, you'll actually get the interior of the X-Mansion down below with the danger room and everything on the other side, which is a really nice touch if you're just a huge fan of the franchise. And apparently there's little like, ties into the comics and everything, little um, teasers and everything to make everybody who's a huge fan of X-Men really excited when they see it. Just little Easter eggs, that's the word I was looking for. Plus, as I already excitedly talked about, there's a third thing that you can get with this Kickstarter, which is the Giant Galactus Mini. And again, he's supposed to be, I believe, on the scale of the Giant Cthulhu that came with Death May Die. And I, for one, love seeing these giant miniatures. And I also think this one's really cool because he's interchangeable and you can either have him run as normal standard Galactus or you can have him actually have been consumed by the hunger and have him be a zombie. And man, that zombie sculpt just looks amazing. So when can you get your hands or at least sign up to you know put in for the Kickstarter on this game? Well, it is coming as early as January 18th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is a Tuesday. So mark your clocks or your calendars if you're interested in Marvel Zombies or the Zombicide franchise. This might be one you'd want to get your hands on. It's that time of the video where I interrupt to tell you about my Patreon and to let you know that we just added a Discord server, which all tiers get access to. So if you're wanting a way to chat with me, share with me your projects, or just tell me what board games you're playing, definitely make sure to check the link below and check out my Patreon. Miniatures Maestro, BFG toting badass, Angela from Hobby Night. Now, before we begin, I just want to point out a No Rolls Barred video about New Year's resolutions that I am featured in. It's awesome. You guys should definitely go check it out. And a huge thank you to Adam for that introduction. The craft world calls and we shall defend it. We have more beautiful new miniatures to discuss because I can never get enough of that sweet, sweet plastic, you guys, I just can't. So 
Switching over to Games Workshop, we got a look at some new Eldari Guardians. The kit is going to, of course, be able to make Guardian Defenders with their heavy weapons platform, but it's also going to be able to make Storm Guardians with a Serpent Scale platform. I am so... I, I did not know how much I actually needed these models in my life. So I really, I've never plated Eldar. Let me just be very clear about that. Eldar have always been the Chaos Cultist Jam, and we never really had them in the house because he had sold that army before we even knew each other. So we've never had them floating around. I've always had kind of a passing interest in the lovely space elves, but never done anything with them. And seeing these new models coming out has me so excited. Like I just, I wanna paint so many live little elf boys. I don't think I'm going to have their pointy ears available for me to paint, cause I think I'm gonna put helmets on most of the figures. But regardless, Already, I'm super pleased with the look of the new models, and I can't wait to see more. Now I want to talk about two miniatures that I think are very cool, but kind of confuse me on how you're supposed to get them because it doesn't really seem consumer friendly, and I'm a little irritated with Games Workshop about it. So we all saw there was a new Inquisitor model previewed recently. He looks really cool, doesn't he? Well. It's gonna be a little weird to get him. He is an anniversary specific model. It is Inquisitor Aramis Cartavolnus. I am probably horribly mispronouncing that, but I apologize, I tried. And we also are getting along with this Inquisitor the option to get a Hagot, the Gut Ripper, which is an Age of Sigmar orc who looks pretty badass. He's got a really cool shield, and I'm really digging that new orc line from Age of Sigmar. But both of these models are anniversary specific models. So you might be thinking, oh, sure, we can just like pick them up during GW's anniversary day or whatever, right? Wrong. You actually are getting these on the day of your local Games Workshop store's anniversary of, I assume, opening. It didn't actually specifically call it out, but I assume that's what they mean, which means that it's going to be really random and there's no specific date in which you can get these and it's going to be different for every store, which just seems weird and means that, oh, I don't know. I just don't know if a lot of people are going to end up getting their hands on these because who knows when they're actually going to be available because most people aren't going to just offhand know when their Games Workshop store originally opened. Now, of course, you can absolutely go and call your Games Workshop store and be like, hey, do you know when you're going to have this model and maybe get them to reserve one for you? I don't know if they do that, but it doesn't hurt to ask or at least find out when the anniversary is. But this is such a weird way to like send out a model into the world and then make it so really a lot of people probably aren't going to get it and not even because of a scalper problem, but just because the time in which to get it is really arbitrary. I just, it doesn't make sense. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. The last thing that I want to talk about in this news episode is what's coming new to Warhammer Plus. Now, as a lot of you may know, Chaos Cultists and I went ahead and subscribed to a year for Warhammer Plus when it first launched because we wanted to see what it was like. And frankly, I wanted that really cool sniper miniature because I just think it looks rad. And so far, I haven't been super, super impressed what's on there. And frankly, what's coming doesn't have me that much more excited. But let's go ahead and talk about what is arriving. We're of course going to get more from the Loremaster series, their painting series, Citadel Color Masterclass, as well as their Battle, Battle Report series. There's one for Age of Sigmar, as well as one for Warhammer 40K. They also have added a podcast series called Deep Strike, which I have not watched at all because it wasn't there when we first subscribed to Warhammer Plus, and I'll admit I haven't opened up the app in several months, but it apparently is more of a podcast discussing and deep diving into some of the animations. I believe the first ones really focused on the, um, uh, 
the Space Marine show that I'm blanking, Angels of Death, that they had out on the app as well. And I think that's pretty cool. Maybe that means this next season they'll focus on the Exodite because that is in fact one of the new animated series that should be coming to Warhammer Plus in 2022. They haven't had an official date of when it's supposed to officially arrive, but it's an animation, it's focusing on the Tau, and I hope it ends up being cooler than really my feelings for it right now are because right now I'm not feeling super hot about it. We also got a preview of some new Hammer and Bolter, which is also one of their anime series that's been on there for a while that I have had a couple of hit or miss dealings with. There have been some episodes, I will admit, that I greatly enjoyed. In particular, the one with the Zinch Demon in the library I thought was fantastic. The, there have also been some that I really haven't liked. The one with the orc telling the story of Yarrick and everything was mediocre and kind of dull, and I still don't know why they used it as their preview option. But hopefully what they continue to produce will be better and more like the stuff that we got for the library. Now, one of the other things that I thought was interesting in the trailer that they showed to tease what was coming was a preview of the next two models that yearly subscribers can choose from to basically get as part of their fee for being a subscriber. And they're pretty interesting. The Age of Sigmar one is okay looking. Like they just showed silhouettes of both models. And frankly, he looks fine. It looks like an interesting model, but it just, I think it's a chaos sorcerer. He definitely has a big chaos star around his head. He's got his hand out in sort of a witchy like casting pose. So I'm definitely leaning towards chaos sorcerer for Age of Sigmar, which I'm sure will be very cool. But the thing that interests me more is the one for Warhammer 40K. I don't think it's for Warhammer 40K at all. I think it's for Warhammer 30K. If you actually look at the model, the shoulders and the weapons don't specifically feel like anything that I've seen in Warhammer 40,000 in the modern lore. It actually, especially those shoulders, look a lot more rounded like you would see in Horus Heresy. So I actually think this guy, especially considering he has a lack of a um, backpack on, means that maybe we're getting a Horus Heresy era Terminator, in which case, because he looks kind of chonky and big, um, I'm really excited for that. If that is the case, I, I, I hope there's another way to get this model. I doubt that there will be, but I'm going to be very excited for that because not so much because it's locked behind the subscription service and it's going to be limited for people to get, but the thing that actually excites me about it is we've now seen two or three models coming for Horus Heresy that have been in plastic, which makes me really, really hopeful that we actually are getting a new Horus Heresy game with a new edition that has plastic models. Wouldn't that just be amazing? All right, that has been it for this week in hobby news. There's some exciting stuff coming. I'm especially looking forward to that Marvel Zombies game. And actually, speaking of games, we have a Let's Play series coming to the channel soon, in which place I will be playing Space Marine 1 because I want to get really hyped for Space Marine 2 when that comes out. And I've actually never played the game. I've only watched Chaos Cultists play it. So this will be my first time playing it. I hope you guys are going to enjoy it. I have been Angela. You've been watching Hobby Night. And before I head out, I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons for supporting us and allowing content like this to continue to be made. You guys are awesome and we wouldn't be here without you. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. I'll see you in the new Let's Play with a new painting tutorial later. And then of course, more news. Bye.